of service of the word as it begins on page 38 at the front of the red hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come to the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful and perverted. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. <coughs> I invite you now to chant with me Psalm 118, found on page 118. <laughs>
us in the Gospel of St. Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at the 36th verse. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled, frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have something to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The Gospel of our Lord. consideration is recorded for us in the book of Acts, reading from the fourth chapter. <clears throat> Dear people of God, chosen to carry the name that saves. What's in a name? Well, it used to be that a person's name was something that was extremely important. Their reputation depended upon having a good name. 
that's still the case today. And that certainly shouldn't surprise us because actually the Bible tells us that a good name is greater than having riches. A good name is more important than gold or silver. Companies and businesses strive to make sure that when people hear their name, they only think good things about the company. They want to make sure that when people hear their name, they think about honesty, integrity, dependability, quality. Large companies spend millions of dollars on quality control. Why? So that when you buy their product, you are buying the best. And you'll tell other people about that so that they will buy their product as well. Their reputation is built on their name. A good name is very important. A good name tells you something about that person or that company. Now, the name of Jesus also means something. It means power. As the book of Acts records, Jesus' name again and again demonstrates power to heal and power to save. The physician Luke had previously chronicled the life of Jesus in the gospel that bears his name. The Holy Spirit now also inspired him to chronicle the life of the early Christian church. And it's recorded for us in the book that we call Acts, or the Acts of the Apostles. A part of the life of the church included some of the hardships, but also the testimony of Christ's early Christians. Already in the beginning, at the beginning of his earthly ministry, Jesus told his followers what they could expect. He told them, I am sending you out like sheep among the wolves. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to, what to say. So today we see Peter who once denied knowing Jesus so that he wouldn't be arrested, now arrested and standing before the people that thought they could stamp out Christ and his name and everything that he stood for by a crucifixion. At this point, I want to read for you some of the verses that also led up to our text so that we have a little better understanding of what we're looking at. This is from Acts chapter 3. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at three in the afternoon. Now, a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sanhedrin came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, 
and the number of men grew to about 5,000. The next day, the rulers, elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so was Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple, and are asked how he was healed. Then know this, you and everyone else in Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you completely healed. He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Notice what Peter says. Nothing stands without Christ. These rulers, these teachers, considered themselves the builders of Christ's church. The people's, not Christ's church, I shouldn't say, the people's religion. Jehovah and the like. But they were the ones that actually rejected the stone on which God wanted to build his church. And just as it was with the power of Christ that this lame man was healed, so also it's by the name of Christ and the power of Christ that salvation comes to believers. For he tells us salvation is found in no other name. Peter spoke of confidence, a confidence that could only come by the power of the Holy Spirit. But it's the same confidence that you and I have today because of that faith that the Holy Spirit has worked in our hearts. The confidence that we point to Jesus Christ as the Savior from sin and the comfort and hope that we have in our lives. Indeed, he is the capstone, the cornerstone of everything that we believe. Picture, if you will, a bicycle chain. A bicycle chain is a connected circle used in many other pieces of equipment as well to try to, to make the workload a little bit easier. All the links in a bicycle chain or other chains are all the same, except for one link, the connecting link. It has to be different, it has to be special so as to be able to join the two ends of the chain together. Without that connecting link, you can pedal all you want. You're not going to get any. Well, Paul reminds us that Christ is that connecting link. That if Christ has not been raised from the dead, our faith is futile, And we're still in our sins. But that link that the Father sent, the, well, Jesus himself has been raised from the dead. And as Peter reminds us by quoting the psalm, he's become the capstone or the archstone that holds everything together. He is our salvation. And my friends, I can't help but tell you how important it is that we speak about the name of Jesus. You know, there are lots of religions out there, lots of churches, whether they be Christian or not, that talk a lot about God, that talk a lot about the Almighty One, that talk a lot about faith, but if they fail to leave out the name of Jesus Christ, they're missing the boat. Salvation is found in no other name. We need to always make sure we understand God sent his son, God killed his son, God raised his son. It's his son that our faith must be in. He is that one needful link between us and eternal life. The religious teachers of Peter's day, they thought they could, they could manufacture that on their own. So they rejected Jesus and what he stood for. They thought that they could build on a cornerstone other than Christ, and somehow that cornerstone would connect them then with heaven. Did you notice how the living Christ still reaches out to these people? People that crucify him with the gospel. He spoke through Peter. Peter, in uncertain terms, tells him, 
that faith is founded on Christ alone. Salvation found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. The gospel message is very clear. Christ and Christ alone. But did you also notice the power of the resurrection in this? Jesus was the one that while he walked on this earth was known, well known, for his miracles of healing, the things that he could do, the power that he possessed. And that's what always frustrated the, the Pharisees and the scribes and teachers of the law. They crucified him and thought that by crucifying him, they could put an end to him. That they had heard of the resurrection, so what did they do? They pay off the guards, not to say anything. They thought that maybe they had done what needed to be done in their eyes. But now, here are these wannabes healing people. They recognized that that could only be done. No one can have that power if it doesn't come from God. And they saw that power in Jesus. They thought they had crushed it. And they were pretty close, weren't they? Think about the disciples as they left on Monday, Thursday, ran away. Think about them on Easter Sunday morning behind locked doors. It looked like maybe they had been able to stomp out this religion. But now this church of frightened disciples had turned into a church of bold confessors. Only a living Christ could accomplish such miracles. And again, to this day, it, it hasn't changed. It's the living Lord that has preserved the church and caused it to grow that name of which salvation can only be found, the name of Jesus. That needs to be the cornerstone, the archstone on which we build. It cannot be who we are, what we've done, the church we go to. It is Jesus Christ and him alone. We have a Savior who died to cleanse us from sin and one who rose again to prove that he did. Our faith needs to be firmly founded in him. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we joyfully and boldly confess that he lives triumphant from the grave. He lives eternally to save. Oh, the sweet joy this sentence gives. I know that my Redeemer lives. Amen. Let's rise. Now may the peace of God that transcends all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. For our confession of faith this morning, I invite you to turn to page 41 as we recite together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
risen Savior, grant us hearts to yield you gladly, freely of your own. With the sunshine of your goodness, melt our thankless hearts of stone. Till our cold and selfish natures, warmed by you alone, at length believe that we're happy and more blessed just to give than to receive. We ask this in Jesus' name. Please rise. This morning I invite you to turn to page 42 as we pray responsibly the prayer of the church on page 42. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls, to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. We thank you for those who teach and preach your saving truth and this place and everywhere. Grant them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, pain and disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Heal those who are sick, cheer those who are sad, calm those who are distressed, and comfort all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Grant your blessings to every nation on earth, where there are wars, may there be peace, where there is danger, let it be healed, where there is poverty, danger, or disaster, come with your almighty power to help and restore. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus our Lord and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies, our minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
Oh, Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. And bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look on you with his favor and give you his peace. sheets normally are on the counter uh, by the TV back there. Uh, even if you have been on in the past, you think, well, they know I'm going to show up. We don't know you're going to show up. So sign up and, and let us know. There will be a practice tomorrow evening at 730, um, so we can get an idea of how many people are going to, uh, to be here in the light. And then the thought is sometime in May, 
uh, that we will be actually playing for a worship service. So if you haven't done it in the past, it's not that difficult. Like I said last week, if you've got a wrist, you're qualified. You don't even need to read music. You sometimes just have to read colors. <coughs> It's a, it's a good thing if you want. Lastly, I do have a letter to read from you, or for you. Uh, you're members of St. Paul's Lutheran Church. On Sunday, April 7th, this is from Mr. and Mrs. Mildebrandt, uh, we received divine calls to teach at St. John's Lutheran School in Elmira, Wisconsin. Uh, Paul is being called for third and fourth grades and principal, and Katie for three and four K and pre-K director. During this time of personal prayer and deliberation, uh, we ask you, the congregation, to pray for us that the Holy Spirit will guide us to know where we can serve the Lord and his lamb, little lambs best. In his name, Paul and Katie Miller. So again, reach out to them, give them your uh, thoughts on things, that they can come to a, um, a conclusion that brings glory to God in his church. Have a wonderful week.